Today, we're going to be making our game characters fly with jetpacks. I'm Bimzy Dev, and I'm here with another tutorial. So stick around if you want to learn how to make your game characters fly. Let's get straight into it. Before we get into the tutorial, I'd just like to mention that there's a free jetpack character asset you can download online and follow along with this tutorial. My mate was kind enough to provide this one, so I'll have a link in the description down below with the download and to his art portfolio. So starting out, I've added the character with a fully functional health bar to my scene. I've created that one in a previous tutorial of mine, so you can check that one out in the top right now. I've also gone ahead and created some jetpack graphics by using the simple shapes that Unity provides in its game objects. So go ahead and create your jetpack game object before we get to the next step. So within our character game object, let's go ahead and add an empty game object, and I'm going to rename that one to grounded. Then we're going to move that one down to a position where the character's feet would sit if the character had feet. Next, I'll go ahead and remove the capsule collider off of the bean, and I'll want to add a box collider onto that one. We'll also go ahead and add a rigid body, making sure that the interpolate method is set to interpolate. And finally, I'm going to grab that jetpack game object that I'd created previously and make sure it's a child of our character game object. Next, I'm going to create the particle effects. So let's go ahead and right click in our inspector and create a new particle system. Now I'm going to go ahead and set that one to one second, making sure it's looping and pre-warmed. I'll go a bit faster for this part just so that we can get through this particle system. We'll want to set the lifetime and start speed. Now let's make sure that we've also got the gravity modifier set to one so that the particles flow down. And I'm going to make sure it's in world space. Next, I'll adjust the emissions and bump that one up to maybe 25 for the rate over time. And then we'll also adjust the shape to make that one a circle. Now, with all that done, our particle system's already looking a lot better. I'm just going to go ahead and scale it down to make it fit the jetpack size in my scene. Now I'm going to go to the Renderer tab and replace the source material with the default square sprite material. And next we'll play around with the color over lifetime parameter by messing around with the gradient. So the first thing I'll do here is make it fade out towards the end, and then I'll set its color to a nice warm orange. And then finally setting the middle part to white, we've got our color gradient looking pretty good now. I want to go ahead and set that one up as a child of the jetpack transform. And then I'll set it into position so it's right underneath the thruster part of our jetpack. As it is, our particle effect looks pretty good, but I'm going to do some last minute touch-ups just to make it look a little bit better. So I'll set the start speed to 1 so the effect has less spread. And then I'll quickly change the size over lifetime, making sure that's a random between two constants. So I'm going to set that one up as 1.5 and 0.5. And then the final thing we'll want to do there is set the lifetime to 0.8. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to go ahead and rename my game object to effect, just so it's a bit more clear. Now with all of that out the way, I'm going to make my jetpack script, and then I'll jump into the code. So within our jetpack class, the first thing we'll want to do is create our variables. Now what I like to do is put all my public variables at the top of my class and the private ones underneath that. Within our start method, we'll want to set our current fuel to the maximum fuel. To make our jetpack work, we'll need to receive an input from the player. So to do this, I'm going to create an if statement in my update loop and look for the input, and I'm going to get the jump input. We'll want to check if this value is greater than zero, which essentially just means that the player has the button held down. We'll also need to make sure that the player has fuel in his jetpack. So we can do this by checking if the current fuel is greater than zero. Now within this condition, we'll want to reduce the fuel based on the delta time. And then we can also add force to the rigid body we've provided. Now as the arguments, we'll want to pass in the rigid body's transform up vector, and we can multiply that one out by the thrust force. And we also want to make sure that the force mode is set to impulse. Now we can grab our particle system and play that one. This will just help us tell the player that the jetpack is actually on. Now the final thing we'll need to do is check if the player is grounded and if he is, add fuel to his jetpack. So we can do this with an else if statement where we grab the player's grounded transform and do a raycast on that one. So we'll want to call physics raycast passing in the grounded transform position. And then as the second argument, call vector three down. Then we'll pass in the length of the raycast, which I'll just put down as 0.05. 
And then finally, we'll also want to add a layer mask for that. So I'm going to go ahead and add the layer mask grounded, which we'll need to update in our scene later. Just to make sure that the current fuel doesn't overflow past the maximum fuel, we'll need to add a check into our if statement here as well. And now with that done, we'll want to increment our current fuel based on the time dot delta time. And then finally, we'll also want to stop our effect. Now we'll also want to make sure that the effect stops if we don't enter into this condition. So let's go ahead and copy out that if statement and then just remove the code block so it's an else statement and then make sure the effect stops there as well. Now let's jump back into our Unity scene and test out if our jetpack works. Now, as I mentioned before, the first thing we'll do is create our new grounded layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and add layer, create the grounded layer, and then I'm gonna to wanna to apply that to my floor. So let's select that floor game object. And there we go, that's done. Next, we'll make sure that our jetpack script is attached to the jetpack game object, and then we'll go ahead and fill in all of those variables. So let's attach the character's rigid body, the grounded transform, and the effect we made. And I think that's everything we need. I'm gonna go ahead and make a prefab out of my jetpack, and then when we play the game, we should see our character fly. One small thing I'll do is attach my camera to my character game object. That way, when we play the game and see our character fly, the camera follows our player. I hope you're enjoying flying your game characters around. As always, leave a comment down below if you want to see me make a tutorial about a specific topic. If you're new to making games in Unity and you want to make your first full game from start to finish, there's a playlist you can check out on my YouTube channel that covers all the fundamentals of making a game in Unity. You can check it out right over here. Thanks for watching and have a great day.